Hello, my name is Terry Reinke. I'm a member of the European Parliament uh, and I have been working a lot on feminist issues, on women's rights, on how to get women into power positions. And I'm super sorry that I cannot be with you in the conference today, um, but I wanted to send you this video and maybe to contribute a little bit to your discussions. Um, because for me, this is really a political priority that I have always had. Um, and I think it cannot be overestimated how much especially the Greens have changed uh, women's access to power. Um, if we look, for example, at parliamentary uh, representation of women, um, we can really see that with the growing of green movements and then green parties um, in different parts of the world, not only in Europe, um, there have been much more women who entered the stage. Um, and especially because of instruments such as the women's quota, we can see that we could really effectively change maybe the barriers that were there before and obviously the quota is an instrument that eventually we want to abolish because we don't want to have um, these kind of um, specific focuses on certain groups anymore but as long as there is this misbalance as long as we have so much um, patriarchal resistance towards women getting into positions of power towards lgbti people getting into positions of power i think it is important um, to push for um, really effective measures and obviously quotas there are only the starting point and um, we have to go beyond that so I think we have seen that in a lot of ways Greens have pushed for for example empowering women through um, different means programs but also especially organizing women's groups organizing women's initiatives women's organizations and um, to really bring together um, different demands and then uh, push for them, not only on the party level, but also on the societal level. Um, and I think what we are seeing now in the COVID crisis is that in certain parts of society, we see a level of re-traditionalization -tra so that, um, for example, when um, children cannot go to the kindergarten or to school, that it's somehow expected that um, especially women take over the tasks again um, to do the care work at home. And I think it's really important that we fight against uh, this tendency because we have done a lot uh, in terms of empowering women to um, get into jobs that maybe they didn't have access to before, to get into power positions, not only in politics, but also in the economy, in academia and in different fields of society. So it's very important to keep that line and to push even further. And one of the things that we have been pushing for a lot in the European Parliament is um, you know, we are at the moment discussing a massive support and recovery package um, for uh, the European Union. Uh, and we have always said that very often these kind of investments, um, they're basically gender blind. So um, they mostly go into sectors that would um, uh, benefit men. So into construction sectors, into the automobile industry, into the chemical industry where uh, to a large majority still today men are working and maybe in industries where there are majority of women. Um, so maybe in public services, in the care sector, um, there is much less investment. Uh, and we have asked here in the parliament to do a gender impact assessment and then to make sure that this money is evenly distributed amongst different groups in society, uh, including between men and women, so that we don't have with this recovery fund, with this investment into the future, an actual um, reinforcement of gender stereotypes um, through uh, a misinvestment of the funds. So this is something that is very important, but also through legislative steps to push for a true empowerment of women in our societies. Um, we are expecting a, a, a proposal against the gender pay gap by the end of this year. We have been waiting now for centuries and centuries to have something done about the still uh, very strong um, differentiation in uh, payment in classical women's jobs and men's jobs uh, and we think it's about time that something is gained as uh, is something is done against this gap um, there is and also in terms of uh, lgbti rights we are waiting for an lgbti strategy by the end of the year um, still a lot of LGBTI people today face discrimination, for example, when entering the labor market, but also in their everyday lives. And we want to do more in order to fight against this form of discrimination, especially in times of Corona, when in many countries, also in many European countries, LGBTI people have specifically been used as scapegoats um, during you know, times of insecurity, a lot of maybe 
old, um, very problematic stereotypes have come back to the surface. Um, so we have to stand up against this together. Um, there are a lot of different things uh, in the making, as you can see. Um, I think uh, Corona has shown uh, the inequalities that we have in our societies, maybe even stronger. And I think that maybe we can use the awareness that comes with this to say, okay, now we have to stand up against these inequalities um, even stronger also. Um, so I hope um, that um, you are going to have discussions obviously about this. Also, uh, maybe concrete proposals for empowering women, for empowering LGBTIs, for empowering other marginalized groups, not only in green politics, but in politics and our societies as a whole. I wish you a wonderful conference um, and I hope that I can maybe sneak peek a little bit into the results that you are going to have. I hope to meet all of you um, maybe one day in person again or in the digital sphere. Um, and all the best from Brussels. Uh, stay well.